Welcome to the May the 4th Star Wars special of Geek Country. I, I can't see anything in here and it's really hot and sweaty. Uh, no one saw me, they can't see this yet. Hi, welcome back to Geek Lunch Me. Uh, I'm your host Chris and today's May the 4th, the day that Star Wars fans have officially declared to be Star Wars Day every year. Uh, or maybe it's just a crass marketing uh, ploy by companies to sell us uh, more things that we don't need. But hey, isn't that every holiday going really? I thought we'd start off by looking at everything that's coming up Star Wars wise, starting with what we know that's lined up uh, for TV. Obviously Mandalorian's been a huge hit on Disney Plus, so it's no surprise that there is an absolute shed load of stuff coming our way. Now starting um, today, or um, I'm recording this on Sunday, but this is going out on May the 4th. So on May the 4th, uh, Bad Batch, which is the animated sequel to the uh, Clone Wars uh, also animated show that's hitting uh, well first uh, I'm not sure how many episodes they're putting up but at least the first episode possibly I know some they put up one or two so you might get a couple of episodes today of the Bad Batch on Disney Plus uh, following a group of clones but from the trailer look they go um, a bit of renegade uh, rebel against the uh, uh, the uh, fledgling empire and possibly maybe they're like joining the, uh, the rebellion who knows um, Ming-Na Wen is voicing uh, Fennec Shand, who we've seen in, in the Mandalorian uh, show, so she's reprising her role there. Or recurring characters will also get uh, Saw Gerrera, and, uh, from, who's mostly, mostly seen in Rogue One, and, uh, and Tarkin. Uh, Moff Tarkin is going to be in it as well. So uh, yeah, that uh, should be episodes on there today. Um, then, upcoming, we've got Star Wars Visions, and that is going to be uh, 10 episodes, or I should say there's going to be 14 episodes, I think, of Bad Batch altogether. Yeah, Star Wars Visions is going to be 10 episodes. It's basically um, an, an, an anime anthology, uh, also on uh, Disney+. Plus. Um, they did release a trailer for it. I will put that in, in the link below. Um, it's just going to be lots of different animation studios uh, in Japan doing their own take on Star Wars stories. So that's got the potential to be really good. It'd be something a bit different. Um, uh, the Matrix did it years ago. Um, so, uh, other things have done it since. I feel like the uh, Love, Death and Robots uh, anthology that I spoke about uh, the other week, um, hopefully, should be a mix of different styles, I say. Um, so that, I suspect that should be coming, I would have thought, in the summer after Bad Batch, because there's a gap. Because then, uh, in December, we get the book of Boba Fett. Um, which looks to be about eight episodes. That was teased at the end of Mandalorian Season 2, obviously where we see uh, Boba Fett and Fennec Shand um, coming into uh, what was Jabba's palace, uh, killing Bib Fortuna and taking over. So that looks like there's going to be a Boba Fett-centric show. I think Robert Rodriguez is uh, involved in that. He, you know, he directed the episode uh, where Boba Fett came back um, and uh, and Razor Crest was destroyed and uh, Grogu was kidnapped in the last season of The Mandalorian. So um, I think he might be involved in that. After that, things start to get a bit sketchy. The Andor show, uh, which is like the sort of prequel to Rogue One following Cassian, uh, that looks like a 12 episode show. That is currently filming in the UK. Uh, they're just doing some location shoot on some, uh, some beaches up north somewhere. Um, that's been looked after by Tony Gilroy, who's stepped in uh, and rewrote um, and apparently direct, re uh, directed some of the reshoots uh, when that's uh, when Rogue One uh, went a bit astray uh, during the editing process. Um, and um, not sure how much work he involved on, but obviously you can tell from the the trailer that shows a lot of different stuff where the Tie Fighter comes in um, shooting uh, shooting at Jen when she's up on the high platform, which didn't happen in the final film. And there's shots of her uh, running across the beach with the Death Star plans in her hand, which obviously none of that happened in the film. So it was obviously there was a lot of stuff going on there that, um, that got reshot, but he was involved in all of that. Now that is coming up next year. Um, no more specifics than that. That will be followed by the Obi Wan Kenobi show, which uh, you and McGregor, obviously Hayden Christensen, um, is involved with. They are just started filming that in California, I believe. That's going to be six episodes. That one that's been looked after by Deborah Chow, who directed uh, one of the episodes of the uh, uh, season one of The Mandalorian. So that's in good hands as well. Um, I suspect that'll be late next year. It might even be the year after, depending, because um, you've got Mandalorian Season 3, which is rumoured to start shooting soon, if it hasn't started already. Um, I, that, I imagine that we might get that end of next year. So I don't know. I don't know if you'll get, I don't know if we'll get and or Obi-Wan and Mandalorian all next year, following straight on from the Book of Boba Fett. Sounds, uh, there's quite a lot there. Um, I know we've had 
um, like the Marvel shows, we had uh, like uh, One Division, The Falcon, and Winter Soldier. And then in a month's time, we've got Loki. But I think that was just the pandemic had uh, meant they couldn't finish them, and they've sort of had to bunch them all together. But um, yeah, I don't think it's going to. I don't think in future we're going to get that much content uh, all together at once, unfortunately. Um, the Ahsoka TV show uh, is then been announced that we're coming along at some point. Obviously, with uh, Rosario Dawson. Obviously, she was introduced uh, for live action in the Mandalorian season two. She's been in the uh, Clone War. Uh, cartoon before and Rebels she was in as well so that uh, that I suspect will won't start filming well I don't know later on this year maybe um, even going into next year so that's coming up uh, that'll be followed by um, we've even got The Acolyte has been announced all we know about that is live action it's um, it's going to follow the final days of the High Republic and the High Republic is something that they're sort of looking at into the um, uh, at the moment uh, with various books and comic books. It's about two hundred years, I think it is, before uh, sort of Star Wars that we know. So obviously, when uh, the Jedi Knights are at their sort of uh, at their height and the, the Republic's uh, working as it should do, um, and obviously the Sith are uh, coming into that. So yeah, I mean, obviously, it's going to be years in the future. Um, a Lando TV series they announced. They didn't actually, all these other ones they announced at the Disney Investor meeting um, towards the end of last year. They saw said all the others who was going to be in them, whether or not they were live action animated. The Lando one, they didn't say Donald Glover was in it, they didn't say he wasn't. Um, they didn't say it was live action or animated, they literally gave us a logo and that was it. So I don't know what's happening with that. I would love to see a live action Lando series um, and use it as a way to continue the story from Solo. Uh, bring back um, Han, uh, Kira. Darth Maul, explore that whole uh, criminal underbelly, um, the Crimson Dawn uh, and all of those groups um, would be, that would be a great thing to do, a um, good way of getting in there, you know, a stealth solo sequel which we're never going to get in the cinema, unfortunately get it underperformed. Um, a droid story they announced, again all we've got was a logo, that I think is an animated show, uh, so God knows when that's coming, that'll be somewhere in the future. Uh, an interesting one is uh, Rangers of the New Republic, that was sort of announced um, that it will be coming up sort of sooner rather than later but it also appeared um that they were sort of that cara dune was going to be uh sort of the main character in the last season of mandalorian it looked like they were pushing her towards she had just sort of rejoined the republic um and was heading that way and then obviously when uh, gina carano um just sort of uh went full uh right wing ranting uh on social media and got sacked so I don't know whether or not they will retool that show and put another lead in, scrap it all together or do something else. Uh, who knows? That one's in the, up in the air at the moment. So it'd be interesting to see what they do with that. That's all the TV stuff coming towards us. That's going to take up, I'm um, going to say, a good two or three years, I would suspect. Um, Movie-wise, um, there's, there's two definite. One they've announced is Rogue Squadron, and that's not coming until December 2023. Uh, director Patty Jenkins is doing that one, uh, who recently uh, did the Wonder Woman movies. Um, obviously looks going to be about uh, an X-Wing uh, squadron, uh, maybe a, hopefully a war film, uh, something like Rogue One uh, would be good uh, following following a squadron. Um, Rumours are it's possibly set after um, Rise of Skywalker, so it'll be a totally new, um, uh, new group of people um, taking the uh, story uh, forward places that we've not seen in a sort of you know, unknown area uh, which which would be great um, which i think is would be a really good idea for exploring that um yeah it's not um obviously that's said it's not going out to december 2023 so we've got nothing else on that at the moment then taika waititi um who is uh one of my favorite directors um can do no wrong for me he is going to be doing a star wars film that obviously won't come out till december 2025 so ages to wait for that one obviously nothing else on that he's currently working on a thor uh, love and thunder so i think this will put he may fit in one of these little independent films uh, like jojo rabbit um, and then go on uh, to do his star wars film afterwards um yeah massively looking forward to that if he can bring a sort of guidance of the galaxy vibe to him you know he, he's always very offbeat uh, but thor, uh, thor ragnarok uh, was incredible it was funny uh, and poignant, a um, uh, lot of good action. So yeah, looking forward to that. The only other thing is rumoured the Ryan Johnson trilogy. Still, they seem to talk about it as though it's going ahead. Um, back when Last Jedi came out, or even before it came out, it came out. The critics went berserk for it. Uh, they quickly announced that yeah, Ryan Johnson is going to be doing uh, another trilogy for them. 
and then obviously the film came out, got you know general release. Uh, a lot of the public didn't like it. it really split the fans. Uh, a lot of people didn't like the way that they that he sort of treated uh, the character of Luke and how things ended up. Um, I've got mixed feelings on it. Um, I do enjoy the film, but yeah, it does stop the story dead and doesn't really carry on uh, the story of the Force Awakens and left them a real problem. Um, I've had a good change of story, which is why Rise of Skywalker uh, ended up being quite lackluster as well. So um, we'll discuss that, I think, in a future. We'll look at the, what, what went wrong with the sort of Disney sequels uh, in a future episode. Um, but yeah, I th they said they rushed out and said, yep, yeah, you know, the, the critics loved it. And so they quickly said, yeah, he's going to do this new trilogy for us. And then uh, obviously the fan base sort of rounded on it. So who knows? Every now and then they sort of he he will do an interview and say that oh yeah I'm still working on these films. Um, and Disney's never said no, but um, I I would highly doubt that we'll see them. I know he's now doing um, sequels and Knives Out. Uh, the, I think Netflix have just bought the right, um, just giving him a lot, four hundred million or something they've paid to do another two Knives Out movies, which I'm assuming he'll be involved in. Um, that's what money you imagine he would so i um, don't know don't know if he's going to get involved in that i can't see that coming personally um but we'll, we'll wait and see on that one um that's it for tv and film um so obviously i'm recording this before may the fourth whether or not disney um drop any new trailers um the only thing i could see an andor trailer it's been filming for ages uh or obi-wan is filming now they could drop just some little behind the scenes stuff from the set so I don't know. Um, hopefully we get that today. Um, if we do, uh, fantastic. If not, um, just ignore this bit. So yeah, that's all the Star Wars content uh, coming to us uh, on TV and film for the next four or five years there. So um, lots of good stuff coming our way. So another thing I wanted to do was take a look at a couple of books that have just come out and that I have picked up recently. First one being the uh, the Art of the Mandalorian, which, uh, as uh, the title suggests, it is all the concept artwork from season one of the Mandalorian show. As you can see, a uh, beautiful book, lots of uh, uh, illustrations. There we go. There's Mando with his helmet off at the end of season one. Uh, X Wings attacking the uh, space station. I think it's the episode where he rescues the prisoner. Uh, oh, it's a gorgeous shot there. Oh, the Stormtroop helmet up on the spikes. And there's, and there's Grogu there. And I think that's the episode that uh, uh, where uh, the Magnificent Seven homage. Uh, the gorgeous Razor Crest. If I can get that. Got the light glare on it. There we go. Looks better. Yeah, absolutely beautiful book. There's the mud horn attack. Oh yeah, there's a Grogu looking as cute as always. The only thing I will say about the, uh, these books is uh, obviously the older ones when I think was done, pencil sketches and paintings and things like that and models, uh, you got a lot more variety. These tend to be nearly all done uh, on computer, which I mean, they still look gorgeous. There's like the opening shot there. Yeah, they still look gorgeous. You, just, uh, you don't get the, the the variety as much. I think tends to look quite samey. There's a, some lovely shots there of uh, designs for Mando's costume and weapons. Yep, so that was the art of uh, The Mandalorian, uh, season one. Should have come out, was originally scheduled to come out last November, then for some reason it didn't, didn't appear, it just kept saying it was on its way, and it finally turned up um, a couple of weeks ago, I think that was. Now this is brand new as well, uh, this coming this week, um, The Art of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Now Galaxy's Edge is the theme park uh, that Disney built, um, one in uh, Disney World, Florida, one in Disneyland in um, California, uh, whole new worlds, uh, the planet of Batu they've created where you can go and ride a uh, smuggler's run, where a uh, ride where you're flying Million Falcon, and then there's the uh, Rise of Resistance uh, ride where you get captured and go aboard a Star Destroyer. Looks absolutely stunning. I've not uh, been lucky enough to go yet, 
um, one day, hopefully, um, obviously once all the pandemic's done and also if I come into a large amount of cash would be handy. Um, but yeah, this has got uh, laid out pretty much the same as the Mandalorian book. Uh, lots of artwork showing the designs uh, for the world of Batu. You can go and look around if you're unlucky enough uh, to go on holiday to the States. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any plans uh, to build anything similar at the moment at Disneyland Paris. I know they are just building uh, the Avengers campus there and some signs and things. Uh, it's a fascinating book. Um, obviously, they have to they they have to design stuff that they can actually build. And it's safe for people to go around. It's not just a case of, oh, yeah, well, let's build this small part and computerize the rest of it. Um, obviously, they've got to build things that actually can function in the real world. Uh, that's the, I think that's the ship as you come out of the uh, rise of uh, the Resistance ride. Uh, that's a concept that didn't get used, which would have been fantastic. Uh, actually building like the back half of a full-size Star Destroyer. I think that probably would have been a bit beyond their... Uh, uh, limits, I think. Uh, I was just a uh, pie in the sky thinking, um, but that's my shot of the TIE fighter there. So, yeah, fantastic book. Um, so it's got quite a few, there's quite a lot of uh, writing as well, a lot of text there that explains uh, what's going on. It's a beautiful shot there of the Millennium Falcon. And there we go. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the art of. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge as well. That's just come out brand new. That is well worth picking up. Um, concentrating again, I mentioned the High Republic uh, that the Acolyte show is going to, uh, looks like it's going to follow on from. Uh, it's the new thing they're exploring at the moment. So it's period 200 years before the Star Wars as we know it, when everything's still functioning properly. Uh, and they've done a whole, there's a whole series of novels and young adult novels uh, at the moment. I've managed to pick any of them up yet as I've still got a massive pile of books that I bought during uh, lockdown uh, to go through so I will get those eventually what I have done uh, in terms of the comic books as well uh, they're doing uh, High, Republic, uh, High Republic comics uh, that also uh, fit in with the series picked this up the other day when the comic shops uh, finally re reopened after the lockdown so I haven't had a chance to read this yet but you, that's uh, that's a series going forward uh, you've also got from Marvel um, the just a straightforward Star Wars monthly title uh, that's ongoing. That's got some fantastic artwork. Uh, that's always a good read. There is the Darth Vader series uh, currently in print. I think it's about the fourth Darth Vader series they've done. He's obviously a popular character. He obviously sells a lot of comics because they keep annoyingly they, they do about 20 issues and then they start again and start again uh, renumbering them from number one again, which makes it difficult to keep track of. But um, that is out there. That's also a good read. Now, one thing I would say. Dr. Afra was a character that they introduced a couple of years ago. She's like a, um, uh, a sort of archaeologist in space, very sort of Indiana Jonesy. The original issues, very funny as well. Um, gorgeous artwork, but yeah, just mostly just, yeah, really funny, something very different for Star Wars. And she's a fan favourite. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we end up seeing her in live action. Um, uh, if we do, yeah, watch the price of these uh, absolutely rocket. It's ridiculous the way the... Um, industry works like that. Uh, Clone Wars issue one, uh, the comic, which is the first time that Ahsoka appears in a comic book. They're going on eBay now for up to £900. Absolutely ridiculous. The comic is about 15 year, 12, 15 years old, something like that. It's, it's not it's not even vintage. Um, likewise, I mentioned Air to the Empire. They, uh, Dark Horse, the comic, that ha uh, the comic company that had the license for Star Wars, before Marvel, that did a, uh, an adaptation of the Age of the Empire novels um, years ago, and all of a sudden, because that's the first appearance of Thrawn, and obviously we know he's coming up in live action in the Ahsoka show, that's now going for four or five hundred quid on eBay. Um, absolutely ridiculous. Um, the other Marvel one is this uh, Bounty Hunters, a comic as well, uh, which is pretty good. I think that's a finite series. I don't think that's going to be carrying on. Uh, it will probably turn into something else. Uh, they tend to just pick up different titles. But um, yep, that was pretty much all the comics that are out for Marvel at the moment. Um, video game wise, uh, today, May the 4th, Star Wars Squadrons, that's getting an update today. Um, very uh, new, different skins and things. I don't think it's a massive update, it just makes any cosmetic changes. Uh, but you can download uh, that if you've got the game today. Um, that's good fun, um, flying around um, in X Wing or um, TIE Fighters. 
uh, or different other ships I believe you can do. I'm, I've only played that a little bit, I need to get into that one more. And then uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, uh, which is a fantastic game. That is, they just announced that's getting uh, an update. If you've got PS5, uh, that's getting an uh, update. I think it's in the summer. Um, so uh, it will look all uh, better in 4K and more more frames per second and all that sort of thing. I'm not really massively up on um, technology when it comes to that, but it was a fun game. It was a bit samey in the end, I thought. Um, hopefully, if they're doing a sequel, which I imagine they are, I think this was the second best-selling title uh, of the year it came out. Um, maybe give Carol Kestis, who's the Jedi in it, um, it, it, you just wield a lightsaber in the game. Uh, if they could give him a blaster at some point, make it a bit different. Some, if they can get him in a speeder or uh, you know, on a, uh, a swoop bike or something, make it a, a bit more different so he's not just running around. Uh, and it tend to be you have to run somewhere, do something, and then basically come back exactly the same way to get back to the ship, which I found a bit repetitive as well. Um, but yeah, but good game. Looks absolutely, looks and sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, the story bits are pretty good in it as well. So um, yeah, give that a go if you've not got that. You know, I paid about £12 for that because I don't like buying games brand new. Um, so yeah, that's available second hand. As I showed in uh, the last episode, uh, toy-wise, Hasbro's currently bringing out these retro uh, Mandalorian figures done in the style of, uh, of the original uh, vintage figures that we had in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, the vintage collection is the other thing they, they put out, which again is, is basically um, done in the same style to look like the old original cards, but with uh, fancy new figures with loads of articulation and things like that. And the other thing they do is the black series, which is the uh, large, I think they're like six inch figures, uh, which are more expensive and come in boxes like that. Uh, this probe droid is one of them. Um, but yeah, as I said before as well, I'm not, uh, you know, that's a, that's a money bit. I'm not willing to uh, sink a load of money into um uh, more than enough with uh, comic books and various other things to buy. So uh, yeah, um, I'll leave uh, leave that for uh, the action figure collectors. So that's it for me today on this uh, Star Wars day. Uh, if you could subscribe uh, and hit like, that would be fantastic and really help the channel out. Um, if you've been to Galaxy's Edge, let us know what it's like. If you've been lucky enough to go there, um, drop us a comment. Do you read the comics? Uh, do you play the games? Do you collect do you spend an absolute fortune collecting the toys? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Um, what, uh, are you a fan of the sequels? Uh, are you more of a prequel fan or are you just old school original trilogy? Um, whatever you're doing today to uh, celebrate uh, May the 4th, um, take care, be good. Um, I will see you next week. Uh, till then, may the 4th be with you and also uh, eat geek and be merry.